Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Charles fell in the ocean somewhere, so we we still trying to find him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Amen. I saw some fish in the ocean saying they running. I said, where y'all running from? They said, Charles is trying to catch us. That's right. Well, hey, it's good to see everybody. Um, hallelujah. Somebody said glory to God. Glory to God. So, Father, we thank you once again for another opportunity to be with you, to, to dine with you, just to be in your presence. We don't take it lightly. For even just last night, we could have been out of here at, at a by the boom, by the flash of a light, God. But you had it when that car missed us. We pray for those who it did hit. But more importantly, we thank you for those who prayed for us for traveling mercy, because your angels definitely were encamped around us. And just like any every everybody else, we couldn't, we don't have to be here, but we're here because of you. And so, God, I just pause to say thank you for saving me, my family, my wife, and all who were with us yesterday. I, I, I don't take it lightly that every day that we see, that wake up, that we ought to give you praise. Hallelujah. And every piece of breath that we have, anything that has breath, ought to praise you. So, God, I thank you for just looking out over all of us, God, and the the truth that we can even see all each, each other this morning, we know that you kept us. And so we thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for your divine guidance. We just thank you for your divine love, God, how you love us so much. And so we just pause. Sometimes we get caught up in what's not right and what's wrong, but we forget to talk about what is right, that you allow us to see this day. And yesterday, may not have been what we expected, but today is a new day. This is the day you have made and we are gonna rejoice yeah. and we're gonna be glad in it. It's another opportunity and it's a couple hours and some hours to turn our morning into dancing. So we just want to just pause to reflect on your goodness and your ability as a father, a loving father, a caring father, one who, takes care of your kids and one who protects your kids and you provide everything that we need for life and godliness. We just thank you that you're not a deadbeat. And more importantly, we just thank you for not all the things you give us, but just how you position us under your love, that we're so loved, not just love, but we're so loved. And that's why you allowed your son to die for us because we're all worth it. I pray that anybody who will allow the enemy to tell them they're not worth anything, that God, their minds be renewed for they're fearfully and wonderfully made. They are the marvelous works of your creation, of your hand, glory to God, of your spoken word. I thank you even now, God, that every head will be lifted up, glory to God, that we'll look to the hills which come in our help, our help coming from you, and that we'll all be encouraged today by the preach word that is coming out of the man or the woman in God's mouth. I just thank you in advance, God, for a rhema word, an uh, in-season, on-time word, God, for instruction, direction, correction, and whatever the word needs to do, God, we give it free course this morning. And we just want to thank you that you've just been pouring out your blessings on this covenant like never before, your favor. Financially, you've just been reigning over us, God. And so we just thank you. I just thank you that even this morning, God, hallelujah, sent more missions than I've sent in a long time, God, even before service start, God. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that you just give us money to sow, God. And it was nothing more blessed than to give this morning, God, even before we even started this service. So I thank you for providing for all of us. I thank you for supporting our missions. I thank you for calling us to this great work. I thank you, God, that not only did you call us to this great work, but backing up this great work. We just thank you. And I now pray for anybody, God, that may have any needs in their finance, in the area of finances, that you meet that need as you've been doing so through this covenant. Do something miraculous, God, for your people have been faithful. And then, God, we will never forget to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen and amen, amen again. Hallelujah. This morning, but I'm, I'm telling you, we could have been dead last night, man. Uh, and wow. I watched the car and 
front of us that the other car hit and just blew up and they flowed. And could have been us. And thank God. I thought I could say thank God. Okay. Amen. And I thank God too because we had a car in front of us who um was swerving like something terrible. I don't know if he was asleep or drunk. But every time the Lord wouldn't because Liberty was like, pass him, pass him. I was like, no, I think I gotta watch him, watch him. Because every time he would um swerve uh to the corner there, I would blink my lights for him to come back. And I did that all the way till he got off his exit and I just kept praying for him. So I, I just pray for him right now that uh, he was okay and got home. Um, the Lord didn't want me to pass him because, I mean, the way he was driving, he would have hit us. So the Lord just said, be his angel, stay behind him, keep, keep flashing your lights to keep him alert. And uh, then he got off the exit. So mm. thank, thank God for his uh, traveling yeah, mercies as well. Could be on medication. Yeah, it could be a whole lot or, of things. You never know. Or just sleepy. So praise God. Praise God for his traveling mercies. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise. God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God, hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every praise, every praise to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word 
I just hear the Lord saying, I said some things to you, and some of you believe me, and some of you didn't. But we need you to open up your hearts to receive what I want to do in your lives. Come on. It's the designated time, and I've been saying it over and over and over, and you have to receive it. I don't care how it looked be prior to this designated time. This is a new season in your life. So open up your hearts and stop doubting me so that I can perform miraculous things for you. Yes. Yeah work on your behalf it's not the enemy that's stopping me it's you you must release your faith and allow your trust and confidence in me to go to another dimension and watch and see if i don't show out and show off in your life i'm ready to manifest myself to you to reveal myself to you to show you that i'm real and not only for you but others around you will see that all that i've done for you it couldn't have happened by you or man, but but the work of me. So I'm doing this not really just for you, but for my glory. And I need you to hear me, my children, says the Lord. I don't know who that's for, but he said, open up your heart. Some of us are receiving because we are believing. Yeah. Others are still doubting. And he said, stop doubting me, because that's what stopped me from doing what I want to do in your life. I told y'all, I don't just say stuff. If God ain't speaking, I ain't going to say it. I just preach the word because that's the, the best way to prophesy. But every once in a while, their spirit of prophecy will come through this ministry. Come on, on us. Come on. And I'm telling you right now, it's, it's, it's going to be magnificent. And it's going to be like so sudden, but explosive. And it's going to happen quickly. It's going to be suddenly. Yes. Be suddenly with explosions. Yes financial breakthrough you watch what i'm telling you and some of you already experienced it even just yesterday somebody yeah. called me several times man i got another bus i got another. i'm not shocked because this is what the lord said yes, yes. amen somebody's yeah. a god and i'm telling you every since sister betty sent them prophecies amen well we made what prophecy when she sent isaiah amen i'm telling you right now it's been happening now prior to that he sent us uh, Isaiah 310, tell the righteous going to be well, but God is speaking to us. Come on, through the words of the prophet Isaiah. And I'm telling you right now, you got to open up your hearts and and and, and something a prophet going that taught yesterday too, man. If you walk with unforgiveness or that, that, that stops the blessings too. Amen. Open up your heart. So I don't know what a judgment is because if you ain't seeing it, it's not God. One thing about God, if he says something and it ain't happening, it's not him. Amen. Some adjustments we need to make. Come Amen. On. Maybe you ain't going hard in the kingdom as you need to. Maybe right. you ain't giving people like you need to. Maybe you ain't giving the way that you should be giving. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, if we would do, memory says, tell the righteous going to be well, those who are living the right way, those who are doing the things that I command you to do, I'm telling you, it's going to be well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Betty. And speaking of that, Sister Betty, um, we got your tithes too and your offering. Thank you. But what we got to open up our hearts. Somebody say, open up our hearts. Open, open up, up our, our hearts. hearts. Yes, sir. I, yeah. I think Apostle Larry kept calling each other all day last night, even this morning, to talk about what God thought. He did it again. He did, but we're not shocked. <laughs> because this is what we prophesied. Come on. See, we didn't prophesy. We said what God said. And one thing about God, when he said something, he's going to back it up. And how can you know that somebody's a true prophet? Because what they say come to pass, it's coming to pass. I'm getting testimonies over testimonies. 
And I mean my bottle and touch. Some folks don't even want to testify it's so good. They probably don't know how to say it because you won't believe it. Mm. I'm telling you, that's how this thing is happening. Amen. Come on. And I'm telling you right now, you might say, well, I'm not experiencing it. Well, he told me to tell you, open up your hearts. Come on. Pray. See what adjustments you need to make. Because one thing about God, if he says it's the point of time, the designated time, it's the designated time. Amen. 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 And you say, well, it ain't happening in here. Then make the adjustments. And the three areas he showed me was that unforgiveness. Maybe you're not giving the right way. Uh-oh. And you're just not releasing your faith. Hmm. You're going to have to make the adjustment. You got to believe God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this may have been crooked, but he says, I'm ready to make the crooked places straight. Yeah, there's been a lot of mourning, but he says, I'm ready to turn your mourning into dancing. Come on. Amen. Oh, I'm just about ready to praise him some yes. more. I'm to worship him some more. Glory to God, because I know he's awesome. He, yes, he, he is. He goes to and fro. Ross said, you know, the enemy goes to and fro to see who can devour God go to and fro to see who trust him yeah. that he can now watch his ear, watch his ear, pour out his blessings in him because he knows that not only he wants to bless you, but you'll use what he gives you to help other people. That's what this whole vision of freedom is all about. It's always about, I got more text saying, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. When they say thank you, daddy, they talk to all of us. Why? Because all the provisions that we're doing. Amen. All the seed that we saw. It ain't nothing better than I feel so good that, and I ain't gonna be done. I ain't never let nobody take that job from me. I love being the one at the Western Union. I'm telling you, because it's, it's a joke. I was talking to Pastor Larry this morning. He said, I already been there uh, sending missions. Yeah, we're gonna do some more, but I just I just had the way I said, wow. And when I come there, them people know me. They already know you sending again, huh? I'm I'm never get there and receive it. Amen. I'm oh, always here giving. Amen. And it feels so good. Where are you sending to now? I feel bad. Uh, I already know the phone number by now. You're in here like every week, multiple times. Come on. Wow. Amen. Wow. And it just makes me feel good. And I say, well, this one here, we pay his rent every month and then also buy groceries for his family. This here, this is going to help finish up a building we're doing. This here, this man starting schools for us all over the world. So this just coming to him for the great job he's doing. And I like to explain what each seed is for. I'm sorry, y'all, if y'all ain't where I'm at. I'm, see, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, let me shut up. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. I want mine. I want okay. mine. I know the That's way you get to it, help other people. I'm telling you, God takes care of people who takes care of him. Mm. Well, we may take care of him. How can we take care of God? Well, Jesus said, when you do it to the least of them, your yeah. brother, and you did it unto me. That's right. You mean to tell me to take care of God here on earth? Yeah, when you do it to the least of them. Oh, my God. That's right. Oh my. Well, when am I going to get mine? When you give them theirs. <laughs> I don't know. Praise God. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank Jesus. you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've been drunk for like a week now in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm, I just got, I'm bubbling with joy because I know, I know, I know it's our designated time. Hallelujah. Do you remember when you were kid and December 25th came around? That was your designated time. Well, God is bigger than December 25th, y'all. Oh, y'all hear me? He says, my anger lasts a moment, but my favor a lifetime. Every day for the rest of your life can be December 25th, since that's the only thing you can attribute to blessings. That's funny. You know you look forward to that day, and then when you got older and you had kids, you weren't all excited about it because you had to give more than you received, but then you got excited about, why well, this here, tax time. That we thought that the only way we can get blessed is to get a refund. Hey, the, don't don't play with me, church. Oh, and that's how oh, oh, oh. Come that's on, man. Day. A I'm refund. Excited. Well, I come to tell you, he's bigger than the IRS. Come on. He's bigger than Santa Claus. Oh, y'all hear me? He's the reason why we celebrate Christmas. Come on, somebody. And he wants to bless. He, he's bigger. He, right? He's bigger than trick or treat. He ain't got to trick nobody to treat him. If you do what I tell you to do, I teach you. I bless those who obey me. Come on. He wants to bless his children every day. What kind of father would you say, I'm going to bless my children once a year?
Thank you, Sister Betty. I know you with me. I talked to you because, you know, I don't know where anybody else at. They ain't Google land or somewhere. But glory to God. God says, I want to pour it out on my children. So open up your hearts. Let God do what he wanted to do in your life. Can you get out the way and let Jesus be the way? The way the transgressor is hard. Come on. But the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and add no sorrow. Come on. You got all this sorrow. You, you mad more than you glad. You got to let God rule. Come on. You got, you got to get out the way. Get nasty out the way. Hey, come on. God wants to move. Ooh, lift two hands and say, Lord, I give you permission. Ooh, my life don't belong to me. Permission. Hallelujah. Come on, glory my to God. My life, me. come on, my body is the temple where you dwell. And because yes. you dwell there, you can tell there. Tell what? Tell me what to do. Wow. <laughs> See, he don't just want to dwell. He wants to dwell to tell you what Thank you me. need to be doing. Yes, Lord. You out here chasing this and chasing that. And no, chase me. I'll get you all the other stuff. Remember, I already gave you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Why don't you chase me and let me release it to you and stop trying to get it through your business, through your job and all that. No, do what I call you to do. And I'll give you all that stuff. Ooh, somebody say, I'm open, Lord. I'm open, Lord. Open, Lord. Uh, I didn't ask to go to Africa and all that, but that's, that's, that's what he had for me. I ain't asked to go to India. That's what he had for me. Come on. But guess what? I learned to say yes. I give myself away so he can do, Sister Betty. Mm. Come on. If it was up to me, I'd be playing basketball, still coaching in the principal of the school. Come on. But it ain't up to me. Come on. Somebody say, I don't live for me anymore. I live for him. Only say it if you mean it. Come on. Say, I don't live for me anymore. I live for him. And watch this here, not just on Sundays. I give you a little bit of time on Sunday. What if he said that to you? You're in the middle of your crisis, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll, I'll wait for Sunday, you know, because you reap what you sow. You give me a little bit of time just on Sunday. So, so you hold on till Sunday. Hallelujah. Ah, it's not like that. It's not like that. Come on. Can we lift our hands one more time and open up our hearts? Hi. I am thankful to open up your heart so that you can see the manifold blessings of God be poured out in your life. But why do you want it so bad for us? You heard me yesterday. I'm not selfish. Larry knows me. I'm a giver. Come on. And, and, and I'm also a rejoicer. I love to rejoice with others who are rejoicing. It brings pride more joy to me than me celebrating what he did in our life. Open up your hearts. Come on. I want to hear more testimonies. I want to see God pour out more of his generosity and his anointing, his favor, his grace. Come on, his blessings in your life. Not only for you, but all those around you, your family members, your co-workers. Come on, those you meet in the supermarket. I just want God to fill you with him so he can use you for his glory. Amen. That's my prayer. Amen. I'm going to get out of the way because I know the Bartman's, amen, or back on land, dry land, out the water. I think that boy a fish too. Don't two a fish too. They live in the water, amen. But I may know we both live in the water too. The Holy Ghost is a type of water. So I'm gonna get out the way and I'm gonna turn it over to the Bartman, all the way from wherever they from. God <laughs> wherever they might be today. Where they might be today, amen. Uh, West your blip, Collegeville. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord Father. Let's just worship him and praise him and thank him for this beautiful day that he has created and he saw fit for us to be part of it. Yes, we just want to thank you, Lord. We want to magnify you. We want to exalt your holy name for you alone are worthy to be praised, Lord yes, Father. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, Father. We give you glory and honor. Thank you. Awesome, Lord. Thank you. You are a great God. Hallelujah. 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 Before we know that we need you. Yes, we worship you. Hallelujah. If I were at an Eagles game, you would be saying, go Eagles, 
76ers. Go, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. And I ask that this word will penetrate you. This word will challenge you. Because we are on God's team. Okay, he has given each and every one of us the baton. Now, what are you going to do with that baton? You're going to fumble it? You're going to drop it? Or are you going to pass it to someone else? Because we have work to do. We have work to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I have a question for you. Glory to God. I know, Pop. There you go. Question. She always asks in the question. Yep. So, my hold question. Up, hold up, hold up, Jay. Hold up. I said nothing. Said nothing. <laughs> but go ahead. We already know okay. how you feel. Hey, look. The it's violence. The violence. The violence. Oh, we already know you put us in class. Come on, it's okay. <laughs> so the question is, who was the most inspiring person in your life? Um, for me, I would say it's my parents. Okay. And you can pass everyone. You don't have to answer because there's no pressure because maybe someone did not sow seed in your life or you didn't have that inspiring person. But if you had someone inspiring you that that made you help you to be the person that you are today who planted seed in your life share give that person reverence let them know um who is it, it, it um anyone can jump on or jump in um let me jump on let me jump on since you said i has an issue <laughs> i that's the easy one for me first i say my father because he was a provider and it's funny, my brother, who was really my cousin, but like a brother, my, my dad took about 11 other kids in our house. And one of them I was with yesterday and he never called me cousin's brother. And he was just so unselfish um, and and just sacrificed. And then I would say my mother, because she could have been like, no, nah, these are not my kids. I, you know, I don't want my kids to lose. And how my mom kind of allowed it to happen. So she co-signed on it. And so the two of them, not only what they did for us, but what they did for all our family and anybody who had a need and anybody who was ever hungry can come to our house to get a meal. And so I'll say number two, and then it was two other guys, a guy named Richard Johnson, who my wife knows well, one of my uh, first and craziest coaches, but hardest coaches, and another one, Gail Jackson, because they were extensions of our home when my mom and dad was at work, because they both had to work. It was like that back then. Um, that we would go there after school, hang out to the boys club from 3.30 to nine o'clock every single night, Monday through Friday. And they taught us how to cook and they uh, you know, made us do our homework at the boys club before we played basketball. All that, so they were extension of our home and they were Charles, they were tough on us. They didn't tell us what we wanted to hear. They told us what we need to hear and they disciplined us accordingly. So those four, you know, were to me the most four important who shaped my life. Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor Cordy, would you like to go next? Okay, I would say, of course, my mom, um, my grandmother, and my aunt Babs. Okay. Charles, would you like to go? Sure. There's always got a question. No. Um, the. Uh, <laughs> my uh what was the question who, who inspired you okay um the persons who inspired me also were the ones who were uh encouragers to me and they were people who always had my back no matter what and who always used their their words to lift me up and to to let me know 
of a higher expectation, and that would be my Uncle Will and my mom. No matter what I was going through, it seemed like in their eyes, I could do no wrong. And they were always there to kind of say, you can do it. I believe in you. I've seen you do this. And they always repeated all the things that I did right or all of the, the successes that I had in my life. And it always encouraged me to be able to, to go forward. So that was my uncle, Will, and my mom. And they were obviously, well, not obviously, but they were sister and brother. Okay. Um, with the new swans or Hope or Sister Betty or Seti. You can say. Yeah. Anybody. Anyone. Phil, you know, you can. We can go. Um, I would say um, some of the um, parents from uh, um, childhood, neighborhood, Miss Powers, Miss Mabry, a young lady named Miss Dawn. Because growing up, you knew they, you know, today, I truly believe that even back then they served God. They never wavered in Miss Mabry because I talked to her recently. She lost two sons tragically in the neighborhood and um, she never wavered, you know. I can hear yelling out the window, Leonard <laughs> or Miss Powers. You know they never, they never yelled at. Me. They, you know, they just had. They were like, you, you know, that's not right. You know, when you really think about it, then I, I have to say, oh, uh, Mama Monette, when she was like, oh, uh, you know, just some of the conversations that we had when I first met her. And you know, and I never seen her angry. I never seen her frustrated. And you know, when you are a, be, uh, a newcomer, and, and I tell people, you be looking for ways to criticize those that believe until you start believing. So to you know, back then it, it was the the mothers in my neighborhood and present. You know, I was sitting here thinking, and I, and I, I would have to say. Mama Monet, because it, you like the soft words, you know, no matter what I went through, she never, even if she felt that I was wrong or I wasn't listening, her, her, um, her approach to me just made it different. I know dad was going to simmer out with me, you know, model to model, but mom just, she just had this way. And I, you know, and I, and I she used to just kill me all the time with that softness. <laughs> Amen. And it still bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, Sister Betty, we're we're ready when you're ready. Um, all right. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I um uh, I was going down the lane a little bit. Uh, I remember teachers in school. Um, that gave me opportunity to play in sports. Uh, then there was another lady that had a tea room that she worked with the judges of the town the courthouse and she had a tea room. And I used to work in her kitchen. So I learned how to prepare a lot of foods from her training. And then I had other people who were like sponsors in, a, in the neighborhood. Well, I was part of the Elks, Elks marching group some years back in the 50s, uh, though that's not a good organization because uh, <laughs> secret codes, you know, the Lord said. But anyway, I wasn't safe. And um, they would take us to various cities in Reading, Philadelphia, uh, other areas uh, where we were able to uh, be in competition, marching groups and things like that. And then um, I remember also, uh, at the age of 33, when I was in Texas, um, there was a lady, Sister Robinson, that led me to the Lord. And I got more of my training there about Jesus, uh, early, very early stages, because I didn't know Christ. So I did accept Christ in Texas. So that turns my life over to the good side of the pages of Jesus, because he was the answer to my uh, 
my hard headedness. Sometimes you go do your own things and and the things of the world that God wants us to be on his right, on a path to salvation. So ever since then, I've been on the road to Jesus, uh, with Jesus, uh, learning about him, praying, uh, singing his songs and um, being encouraged along the way by other people, saints in, along the way, how to give my tithes and offerings, uh, even though it was very little at one time. I mean, <laughs> Uh, there was time I didn't have any, hardly any money. My mother used to send me money uh, during my marriage stages. And uh, that would be enough to pay it. Maybe it was $10, but I gave God a, a dollar out of it. And uh, he would just pray over the food and God would bless the food. You know, one chicken and you pray over it, signs of miracles. And he would stretch your fish, uh, your fish or either your... Uh, your chickens during that time and how your macaroni and you bake that you have enough for a couple of days or more and mm -hmm. he just taught you how to stretch and when I would go in the stores I would see sales and things um, that he would taught me how to take my money and use it very wisely so that was my encounter during life so I'm still learning with the Lord uh, with his Bible every day read my scriptures each day I don't I get up, I have my Bible in the bathroom and I have my time at the tables. And uh, I have to have the word of God and to pray each and every day. So that's helped me uh, during my 80 years, you know, soon be 81. So I thank Amen. the Lord for that. Praise wow. God. What? Hallelujah. Wow. Looking good for 81. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> I never thought of that. Is there anyone else that would like to go? Mama Jeanette or Hope? Yes. Um, anyone? Well, first, my well, who has been the most inspiring person in my life? I would like to say my sister um, has been my rock. And um, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. And then for me to have my spiritual mom and dad, just to show me what life really looks like on God's side, I can honestly say they have been an inspiration in my life. And then my son, because when I had my son, I knew it wasn't just about me. So he's been the most inspiring person as well in my life, just to strive and do the best and be a great example as a mom. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. I'll go. Oh, yeah. Your mom's oh, mom, go, go ahead. You're I muted. Think you're talking, but you're muted. muted. You got to get. Um... Hit the microphone, mom. Usually Al does it. He's not there. There you go. Okay. <laughs> the most expired. Good morning, everybody. The most expired person in my life. Um, persons in my life um, because I was a foster child. So first it was my foster parents um, from the age of um, four to 12. And they uh, was a pastor and wife. And so they taught me the word of God and a lot of prayer. And then it was, um, when I was 13 and a half, believe it or not, I went to work for um, the vice president of Hush Puppy Shoes as a maid. And they taught me and inspired me how to clean a house, how to take care of children, you know, how to um, be organized, um, financial things in life. But I left because I, did, I was on my own and I, had, I didn't have anyone to really tell me anything to do because actually from 13 on I lived on my own in this world so and the other inspired person was um my sister and then when I had my kids my um inspired person was my daughter Monette she was the oldest and I was just as young as my kids. I'm only 16 years older than my kids. And Monetta would be 51 this week. So, and the greatest person inspired me was 
numerous of ministers and pastors and things like that. And God, when I really truly read the word to walk with Jesus, that's my life from 1990. I knew him all the time. You can know God, but are you walking with God? Because he wants you to walk with him. He wants you to do what he says in the word. That's what we're here for. He wants us to have the same understanding. We made a, he, we was bought with a price and we made a deal that he intercede for us and we intercede down here for him. And I understood that. 1990, even though I did know God, but 1990, I kind of like start understanding it. And now um, it's always an understanding you have to get. I got revelation this morning, something that's been there all the time, but then it stick to you. You can see it, you know it, you feel it, you, you're ready to do it. And so you kind of like my biggest inspiration on life is God and my daughter Monette even five years old she was trying to tell mommy what to do when I wasn't ready for God so I appreciate you Monette all your little life amen you have helped mommy out and my other kids as well but because you know the oldest kid has the heaviest load because they end up taking care of everybody. <laughs> so that's my inspiration. Is there anybody I forgot? Um, I'm sorry. And, hey, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. This ministry, this ministry here has been one of the best faithful ministries I ever been in Amen. Yes. and to show you how to walk the way and Apostle Parks and Pastor Cordy and Apostle Amen. Lawrence and Pastor Mornette I salute y'all y'all have been a great inspiration for me and I'm excited even when I feel down I'm still excited I could pull out some excitement. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, I, just, I just want to quickly share real quick. This is really awesome. But I feel like we're at the award show. It's like, okay, um, I'd like to thank, and it's like I need to get my list because there are so many people who have inspired me over my life. Um, I go back to when I was um, uh, in Brooklyn and... Um, I had to be like in third grade or whatever, but all I remember is this young lady named Pat. She was at um, the parochial Lutheran school that we went to and she was in high school, but she would come across the street to pick me up and take me to church with her. I don't know where she is, but I just remember her, that inspiration when I was young, you know, as a little girl, she would come and pick me up, take me to church with her. I remember she took me to a church where they showed the hell movie and I gave my life to the Lord quickly. I remember that. Okay. So, and then, um, yes. And I thank God for the, the youth ministry that was on the corner of, um, in Brooklyn of New York Avenue, East 32nd street. Amen. Amen. And, um, the youth leader, I remember his name, his name was Titch. Titch. He was a West, uh, West Indian guy. And, um, all the, the youth, uh, leaders there were very inspiring, inspiring to me and molded me and shaped me into the woman of God that I am today. Just those seeds that they planted, they probably have no idea, but and I don't even know where they are, but they were very inspirational to me. Um, of course, we can go on and on about the many ministers and pastors who have been a part of our lives that uh, were inspiring as well. Um, I can go on and on and on about that. Um, I want to say that my mom is has been one of the most influential persons in my life as well because she you know she was young when she had me and she could have gave me up she could have gave me up for adoption because she was in the adoption system I mean she could have aborted me she could have done a lot of things um, at the age of 15 16 so um, I just thank God for her and all the world's words of wisdom and pearls of wisdom and all the lectures 
my mom can lecture y'all know that <laughs> my mom can lecture and she would lecture us as as little girls we were sitting there and we had to listen to mom's lectures but they were all life lessons because now that i'm older it makes sense now back then it was like oh my god oh my god but but now it's like wow all the life lessons that she was trying to teach us um so thank you mom as well as um uh my husband was an inspiration for me i was in my 20s when i met him <laughs> i was 23 what was i 22 i was 22 when 22 i met years him old. yep i had just you still look like you're 22 to hey. me girl. Uh, <laughs> later for right. that later see y'all later we gotta go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like um anyway um but yeah so i met him in my 20s so i was still young and he was in his 30s and um, he would, he was such an inspiration for me because man, I loved his, like his, his prayer walk. I loved his, his um, spirituality. And I told him like when we were just friends, I was like, I hope you don't take this wrong, but I'm falling in love with your spirit. And he was like, oh, cause like, I wasn't even trying to be with him at the time. It was just like the spirit of God in him was just drawing me. And um, he was such an inspiration and an example of what a godly man is supposed to be like. And I had appreciated that in him. Um, Again, many ministries, um, and you know, I can I don't want to start naming stuff, but <laughs> but I do remember the ministry in college, um, Victory Christian Assembly, who was very very instrumental in my walk with Christ as a young adult, um, and then um, even Unity Christian Fellowship in Williamsport and Ebenezer Baptist Church, and then of course now Freedom um, is definitely this is our season. Um, of growth and, and um, ministry and um, Apostle Park and Pastor Cordy, you guys have played a very important part of my life in teaching me, um, you know, what it means to be free. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank God for you guys as well. Um, yeah. I hope I didn't forget anybody. So if you were on Facebook land and you was inspirational to me, thank you. <laughs> yes. Man. All that was inspirational. Glory to God. Right, time to put the music on. <laughs> You know how they put the music on when you're in the wards. Yeah. All right, you you yeah you, you got you read two letters, three letters. No, yes. but praise God. So since uh, my wife went, I guess I, I I um mine is as long as hers, if not longer. But um, what really stands out is uh, I have to go back to the basis is of course my mother, um, because of all and 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 my mother and 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 my mother-in-law. Uh, I think the reason why I love them so much is because they have a lot of similarities. They had children at very young ages and they had to pretty much um, raise those that was around them or, or raise themselves because of whatever the circumstances and the situations were. Um, and so both of them, my, my mother and my mother-in-law really inspired me a lot. And I think that's why it, it was so, um, I guess, pulling on me so much to, to try to help my mother-in-law to come to her uh, next level in God and um, and so so on. But my mother was definitely, because as, as my wife said, um, having a young mother, um, she could have done something crazy. But when, when you hear things as you get older, you find out that, my goodness, there were so many inspirations that they had that helped them make the decisions that they made that they didn't get rid of me or they didn't get rid of us. Man. So I thank God for that. And um, because I wouldn't be here to uh, to to preach the gospel and, and share what I've learned over the years. And and I just want to thank God for uh, and, and the inspiration of the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, because we're talking about the good and, and one of the persons uh, other than my, my spiritual leaders now, and, and but my, I think it was my ele elementary school teacher, um, Mr. Mitchell, I never forget him because you, you got to remember, I came from a family, you know, dysfunctional, um, you know, a lot of stuff going on. I was little and I was always told, you know, I'm, I was behind the curve of everything. I wasn't going to be able to read, wasn't going to do everything, all this negative. But Mr. Mitchell, he, he was a, he always, he was always clean. He, he dressed and, and I don't know if he was a Christian because I was in elementary school, so I don't know, but, but he, he, he related to us and he, he would not allow anything uh, more than our best. And, and he would always encourage me and encourage us. 
um, you know, full black a classroom full of black kids. You know what I mean? Mm. And I always sat in the back because I was always embarrassed because I seemed like I was always behind everybody. Everybody was I always had the answer. I didn't always had the answer. But I thank God for him because I never forget his name because even now I see his face because even as a little kid he encouraged me to to you know keep going don't give up you can you can do it you can do it and he tried to help me and then he went every way he could and so anyway um, that that really stands out in my mind but I think about in the ministry side of things there was a lot of negativity but I learned what not to do so I, I appreciate those that didn't get what they were supposed to do to, to learn so they could teach me but I still learned from it and Amen. God showed me how to uh, turn that negative into a positive because those are some of the things I would never want to do to other people that I, I have experienced in ministry. So I thank God for those. I won't name them, but there's there's few of them. But I thank God for that. And uh, and of course, uh, Apostle Parks, man, because when, when I, and Pastor Cordy, because when um, we didn't even look at them or know them as pastors, well, we knew them as tight in their titles, but they befriended us. And, and, and so they taught us a whole lot about how to love in spite of. You know, and, and they're still teaching us and we, we still learning some things from them. And and uh, there was one time he had an apostle had to, to she said, man, you got to check your love walk. And back then I, I, I knew what that meant, but I didn't want to hear it. And and I had to suck it up because I would never be disrespectful to him because I respected him. But so he, he may remember this when he told me, man, you know, you got to check your love walk with that individual, you know, and I got quiet because I really wanted to. You know, say, man, you crazy. That's what I wanted to say, <laughs> but that was it. Would have been my flesh, because I said, you don't, you don't know what this guy has done to me. How I try to give my heart and my life. So I thank God for our ministry. I thank God for each and every one of you, that's on this line, because you, you, you may consider me as your leader, but you know, I'm submitted to you as well, and I've learned that from the parks as well, and, and from experiences in so life. Good. But um, so it's just a lot. I, I can go on and on and on. Did the music start yet? So just no, I'm play music. It. I'm getting it. You know, but I, I just I just thank God, you know, for 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 say I thank God for Pastor Pastor, Pastor um, Hope. I just thank and you know not just the leaders above me, but I like those leaders that's beside me and those that's under me, that may consider themselves under me. But I don't consider you under me. I consider you right beside me because I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be who I am without you and without your assistance. So you have influenced me in a lot of ways. So I thank every every one of you. Even you, Pastor Charles and, and Sister Des. I thank God for everybody on this line. All right, the music started. I love y'all. I, I, I didn't think I had nothing to say, but uh, once you get started, you, you really don't have enough time to say because there's so much. But, um, you know, thank that, you. that was it. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this up because, you know, this, yeah. you have us ministering to ourselves. That's really good. Every time. Every time. <laughs> for those who... Um, um, others, if you want to say something, this is your opportunity. Um, if not, that's fine too. Um, but this question, this question is going to go back to, I want you to remember Miss P because in the sermon and the message, I'm going to reflect Miss P and she was a foster parent. So I'm going to pass the baton to my husband. Glory to God. Um, I do promise that there is there is a word, but there's one thing that I, I got to say. Um, you know, there, there's hundreds of names for God. And I, I looked it up one time and they said there was 625 names or descriptions for God. Um, and I want to make a new one. Um, and God is the meter of you where you are. So it doesn't really make sense until you understand that God will meet you where you are and deliver something that you need, even though you did not need it. And, and uh, I'm just gonna say this, uh, men and, and women of God, j as soon as we started the, the, uh, the, the Zoom, uh, Pastor Monette, and Apostle were talking about cars and, and people either driving under the influence of sleep or people causing accidents and things like that. And the Lord met me right there, pow, and reminded me 
that first of all, I was protected by him in a situation where the car near me was going crazy and only God, only the force and the Holy Spirit could keep me from having an accident with that person. And I was completely in my right mind and everything at that time, but I was protected. God's sovereignty protected me at that time. But also I have been that guy. I have been the one falling asleep. I have been the one on the wheel. And you know, the, the truth is these days, I would say, just like uh, your daughter said, just pass him. That way, no matter what he does, it doesn't affect you. That's the way I think normally. Just get beyond him so that if something happens, you'll be beyond him. The Lord led Monette a different way and said, stay behind him and kind of help guide him and protect him by flashing your lights, or by doing what you can do. Oh, Lord, that is a whole different way of looking at it. But Because the truth is, I have been the one, and there has been people behind me honking their horns when I drifted the lane or flashing their lights. And there's also that guiding strip, that rumble strip that goes boom when you cross the line. And whenever that has happened to me, it's because I have maybe pushed myself too hard, got up too early, stayed up too late, and I'm driving, and I'm trying to get home. And something about that, I just need to, well, the bottom line is, I thank God. I thank God for people like Monette who are led by the spirit and who don't just go on. People like my wife who will be beside me and say, Charles, are you okay? Wake, wake up, <laughs> you know, do you need me to drive? And I've been in that situation so many times, but I've seen, I've been possibly the problem, but I've also seen God's sovereign hand protecting me from potential catastrophic accidents. So today, right now, I just, I wanna give God glory for showing me myself, but showing me him, even showing me him through people like uh, Pastor Monet. So I just, I just wanna give him glory. And, and that has nothing to do with the message, but it's God. And Amen. I love you, Lord, and thank you for who you are and how many different ways, how many magnificent ways, how many millions of ways you have protected me and kept me and kept us throughout these, these years. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. 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 All right. So the uh, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> Lord. I don't know what that sound was. Sound Jump like a train. Jump on board. <laughs> Jump on board. <laughs> so. Uh, the message that, that I heard in, in just a couple words was nature versus nurture. And there's a lot of a lot of different ways to go with that. And my wife is going to bring out some things um, um, as well. But uh, nature versus nurture is a, an argument about what determines the course of a person's life, how a person turns out and what an impact they have on society. There's psychologists, there's social workers, there's wardens, there's educators, there's all kinds of people who want to figure out how, how to affect the, the seed that is in a small child or in a grown man or in a grown woman and how that comes out and is at what behaviors are manifested. So they have different views on how people develop and then what happens and how they affect the world. Amen? Amen. So obviously they say that the environment where a person grows makes a difference. But there's other people who say the ingredients or the nature, what is put in them from their parents, that's what makes the biggest difference. Now I know that when you make a cake, the ingredients are gonna be very important as to how the end result tastes. But those who are real bakers 
know that there's other things that you do that add to it that make that the make all the other ingredients pop so that you can get the best out of all of what you got. So that's really what, what we're we're talking about. Um, what ingredients are in people and what influences help them get to where they are and how where they are affects our society as a whole. Amen. So this is not a a rah-rah message and, and it's and not actually not a very high scripture message, but it's one for us to think about and then also see if we can be more of those impactors on other people's lives as those that we mentioned at the beginning of the service. Amen. Amen. So it's a book. It's a book um, called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog. And it's a book by a doctor. I'm going to share the name. His name is uh, Dr. Bruce Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. And this book is consist of different stories, different um, clients, children that he worked with that experienced trauma. It could have been trauma from their parents or it could have been trauma from uh, uh, something that they witnessed. But um, Dr. Perry, he worked at, um, he, worked, he worked at uh, the Child Trauma Academy. And again, he treated hundreds of, hundreds of children but I want to share a story in this book about Miss P. This seven-year-old little boy has been to numerous uh, foster homes and has been expelled. He's been expelled from, from school. And everyone talked about him acting like a child or childlike behavior. But Miss P did not have any problems with him in her foster home. So his uh, social worker asked, Ms. P, why aren't you having the problems that these other people are encountering? And she said, when he get upset, I just hold them, I rock them. She met him where he was and the trauma that he experienced late at night, if he had a bad dream or he got up or he was roaming the house, she would put him in a bed with her. But a social worker would look, foster parent, he's seven years old. You don't need to be in the bed with you. But she had to comfort him. And she found a way to help him work through the trauma and to let him know that you're safe, that you're loved. So to me, we all need a Miss P in our lives or we can become a Miss P for someone else, okay? So um, again, that book is called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog. And it's a, it's a book um, that most social workers are recommended to read, but just if you wanna read something good for this summer, get it and you'll be blessed by it. Amen. So um, we all know that every man and woman born after Adam was born into sin. Amen. They have a sin nature. So that's the nature that exists within all of us. And uh, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. And the... The Bible also says the heart of man is desperately wicked. So those things are, are there. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The heart of man is des desperately wicked. We follow after our father, Adam, and we were formed in dirt or dust. Out of the dust of the earth, we, we were created. So all of that is our nature. But 
We were created in the image and likeness of God. Amen. So we have a sin nature, but we also have the Holy Spirit to nurture us or to bring the, that dust, that dirt, that grime, that sin, that uh, mess and pull it all together and create something magnificent out of it. So do we fall back to the nature and just follow after our flesh? And do we just continue after the flesh and go and bust hell wide open? Or do we allow the spirit of God to come in and influence us by the Holy Spirit and by godly and kingdom people in order to be able to go out and get the best out of this pile of dirt, the best out of this pile of clay, allow what has been formed to be created into the image and likeness of God, to be able to follow after the spirit of God, to be able to, to follow that spirit rather than the spirit of the flesh that we were born into, amen? So it's a quandary. We have two sides that fight against each other and you don't even know that it's a fight until you become one of God's children. You don't know that it's a fight because you just follow the flesh at the beginning. Until you wake up, until you are born again, or until you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, do you even understand that it, there is the, the nature and the nurture. There is the nature and there is the Holy Spirit. There is all of that that you want to do to follow the flesh, but then there is the conscience that says, don't do that, that says, follow that man and help him get home by blinking your lights if he sways all along the road. There is a God consciousness that can come in and guide your steps. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Mm -hmm. We have a choice. We all know that, that you, there's raw materials. There's raw materials that you need in order to build a building. And there's raw materials in each one of our bodies. And that's what makes up our body. There's bones, there's flesh, there's the heart that beats, there's all of these different things. But then you've got to have that guide. And that guide we're gonna say is, is on your shoulder or in the back of your head or in your heart. And that's the Holy Spirit to guide all of those different aspects to be able to bring out a, a beautiful creature. The, the, the uh, Psalm 139 says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of God and you are one of those works. But, if you don't know that, if you have not been awakened, if you have not learned, if someone has not come in and guide you and help you take steps to get to that greater level that you have within you, then you just walk af after the flesh and you just continue along the path. And that's the reason why everyone needs someone to pray for them, they need someone to approach them. They need someone to lead them and, and guide them. Thank you. So we're going to go to Matthew 28, 28 verse 20. We're going to start with 18. So it's Matthew 28. I mean, yes, Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen. So what I'm hearing there is, is a mandate. It is a, a command from Jesus telling us what we are to do. Now we need, in order to be able to do that, we have to, we have to have faith. Amen. We have to believe in a better outcome. We have to believe that it's worth it to take the chance or to risk my hurt feelings or whatever it is that causes people not to want to, uh, to approach people with their, uh, with their faith or with their belief in God or to share their love for God or their experiences. We have to go beyond that. And in order to do that, it does take faith. Now, the truth is, every man was given a measure of faith. And when we say the measure of faith, we would assume that the measure of faith is a small amount of faith. But I also look at faith as a muscle. And a muscle that's used and built and worked over and over with repetitions. It grows bigger and larger. I saw Apostle Larry with the guns up this afternoon. I mean, he didn't do it on purpose, but he went like this, and I saw those guns. And I'm like, whoa, that's a muscle there that has been built up over time. And the more you use that muscle, the faith, the larger it gets, and the more ability to do uh, stronger and stronger, let's say, exploits in your faith. So this is going to be a built up faith that it takes in order to to uh, fulfill the mandate that Jesus gave us, amen? Mm -hmm. To make disciples of men, to be able to show them and teach them and grab them where they are and help bring them out of the dirt, out of the muck, out of the mire, into a place where they can be used by God, amen? Amen. The truth is all men have sinned. All have come short of the glory, but all have potential, all have the ability to be something great in God. Amen? So we are all unique. Mm -hmm. Amen? We are different. Mm -hmm. No one has our DNA. Mm -hmm. There's no duplicate DNA. There's some things that come from your parents. But if you have two children of the same parents, even twins they will be different even though they have the same mother and the same father and sometimes if they're identical they come from the same the same seed but they are still different mm -hmm. because god has made each one of us different and each one of us is necessary in order to bring about the cake that he wants to be Amen. To bring about the music that God wants to play. How I know many of you have probably heard a symphony. And to me, a description of a symphony is all of the instruments coming together, each one bringing their individual, different, and unique sound. And bringing that sound, and then when it comes together, it's sweet music. It's beautiful to what people hear. But it's not one flute or one trombone or one drum or one piano. It's all of them bringing what they have, the best that they have, and bringing it together to, to create a symphony. Amen? When you, Sister Betty, makes or bakes Sweet magnificent pie. pies, they're magnificent. And what she does is take all of these different separate, separate agreements now, I believe that she also pours out a little bit of love <laughs> in order to make it be a Sister Betty pie. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to also tell you that my mom made some fantastic cakes. She had one, she called it Mother, Mother Sharon's 
famous, fabulous seven layer, uh, I forget the whole name. It was like 15 different names, but it was a wonderful cake. And, and I can taste it right now. But what it is, is that she blended all the ingredients and she put some of mama's love in there. And then when we had it, it was like a pound cake, but it was better. It was like a lemon cake, but it was better. It was just taking advantage of all of the different gifts that each ingredient brought. Amen. And we, men and women of God, are those ingredients. And God is baking or bringing together us to create the cake that is good for his enjoyment. Amen. Mm -hmm. The cake that brings him glory and honor. Amen. Amen. So that's part of our responsibility, part of our mandate to go and to make disciples. But each one of us has our own field. Each one of us has our own field that we are to work, our own field that we are better equipped to work than anyone else. For example, in your marriage, the two of you are the two that have the most influence in that marriage. No one else. Other people can, can pour into it, but you two, us two, are the ones that are going to determine success or failure or how great we can be or how we can blend together to, to be a magnificent symphony or a cacophony and no one wants to see what we got. Amen. We've got to bring together all of her strengths and, our, and my weaknesses and her abilities and my abilities to create something that glorifies God. Amen. So the two of us have the greatest ability to influence there. And then your family. And in your neighborhood, and at your job, mm -hmm. and at your school, these are the areas that you will be more effective than me and Des, or Apostle Park, or Apostle Larry, or Deacon Say, or Pastor Cordy, or Pastor Marnette, or any other ministry gift. They won't be more effective in your areas or in your field, in your family, in your neighborhood, at your job or your school, because you are there every day, walking it out. People see you when you're not looking or when you don't know that they're seeing you. So that is your field that you must work and no one else can work it as well as you because you were placed there, amen? Amen. People can come in town and give something and it can be a spark, but you are there every day. They see you day in and day out and they know whether you are real or whether you're live or whether you're recording, whether you're repeating it or whether you're living it, amen? So, I remember, um, Apostle Larry used to always say, can I just be myself? Can I be me? Can I be me? Well, you are who God has created you to be because you're fearful and wonderfully made. And you may have gone through something, some type of trauma, but God is a healer. And you have to see yourself the way that God sees you because you we are all on assignment and there is someone out there who may be experiencing something that you have gone through and you might need to be able to plant a seed in that person's life. And you may be the person to help that person to get to the other side. So being a, a natural, a natural helper, I'm not to for me. I believe I'm a natural helper. Going to school has caused me to become a professional helper. So you don't need a title. You don't need a degree. You don't need to be behind the pulpit. You can be just where, you, where you're supposed to be. At that point in time, that's when someone may need that word, that Miss P. 
So you can't be salty, salt of the earth. Truth of the matter is that we are, the community is being traumatized with COVID, with the crimes in Philadelphia. So people need you. People need you. Amen. Amen. Now, along the, the lines of, of people need you, uh, let's think about a spark. So a spark is what starts the, the engine. And a match, one single match, could set a, a forest on fire. It, it's incendiary. Under the right conditions, you could throw a lit match. And if there's kindling on the ground, now you've got a fire. And now the trees add to the fire. And the whole forest can, could turn on, could be on fire because of that one single match, but uh, one single spark that starts a, a chain reaction that starts that, that fire. And so what we want to be in our community, in our, our neighborhood, at our job, we wanna be that spark. We wanna be that match that lights the place up, strikes it up and gets things pumping or stokes the fire, amen? Uh, we wanna have that contagious, or that infectious spirit that causes people to say, I want to be more like him as he wants to be more like God. I want to be just like her because she loved God and her, her face never shows any hurt. She's always excited. She's always going forward, always building people up. I want make sure that the attitude that you have is worth being contagious, that it's worth that if other people were all to come in and be just like Sister Betty, would the world be a better place? Amen? I believe that it would. I believe that if the whole of, of men were more similar to Apostle Larry, then we would be a great group of men. Amen? The truth is, if our spirit is infectious and what we bring every day is something that people want to catch on to and catch that type of fire, and we are doing God's work. Amen? Amen. Do your ways or your walk to excite people to follow God or go ahead and bust hell wide open as our apostle says. You have an area that you are responsible for that that mandate that we read in, in Matthew, that's your field. Amen? Your field to tend as if you were a farmer. Amen? Glory to God. Let's read, uh, if I could get one person to uh, to grab Ephesians 4.16, but I want two people to get it. One person get it in the King James Version and another person get it in the uh, Amplified Version. What do you want? Amplifying what? I have amplified. Okay. We're going, we're, okay. we're going to do the amplified later. We're going to start with the King James Version. That's Ephesians 4, 16. You want King James or New King James? Which one you got, brother? I got the New King James. All right. Let's, let's go with that. From whom the whole body joined and knitted together by which every joint supplies according to the effective working by which each part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. So the, uh, the body is a very interesting way to describe a group. Uh, especially Christian. We talk about the body of Christ. And I know that there are people on here that are going to correct me. Um, but the truth is that every joint must supply. Every part of the body has a role to play. So I'm going to say uh, the body is made up of 206 bones. 
I don't know if it's 206 or 106 or 212, but I know it's a large number of bones. And every one of those bones, every one of those bones is connected and has a specific role to play in order for your, your body to be working as a well-oiled machine, amen? Or to, uh, to do what it's supposed to do, amen? As God designed it, he made it very intric intricate, amen? Mm -hmm. So the body of Christ should be a well-oiled machine like a symphony where every instrument makes the right sound to create a beautiful music, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when every joint supplies, when every part plays its own individual role, even though we're all unique and we all have special talents, skills, and abilities. So you bring all of what you have and all of what I have and all of what they have, and now together we have something great, something that God would be pr proud of and something that God desires from us, amen? Mm -hmm. So we are to work in unison as a body, amen? Amen. But if we think about every, every seed that goes into the ground, every seed that goes into the ground does not bear fruit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everyone does not make it past the trials, the setbacks, the, the things that cause it to be plucked up or caused it to be drowned out or caused it to be uh, rendered ineffective or in, inefficient, mm -hmm. okay? But those trials and those tribulations and those issues and those problems, they are the ones that make it stronger. And if that seed is able to mature, then ma the mature seed becomes the tree that bears the fruit, amen? So the ones, every one that goes into the ground or every one that is in the air doesn't make it into the soil and every one in the soil does not grow. But the ones who do are the ones who go beyond the tough winters and go beyond the heavy rains and go beyond the dry climates or the, um, the droughts and all of that. And then once all of that is done and the strong, mature, fully mature, See, breaks through and becomes a tree. Then the fruit is able to be eaten. Amen? So all of the stuff that we go through is there to make us stronger. If it does not kill you, it will eventually. If you continue to press, continue to work, continue to stand. When you have done all to stand, continue to stand. Then you become mature. And then you can have fruit. And your fruit can be eaten. And it will be a benefit to the world to the church, to the community, to all who can come and see and eat of you. Amen? Glory to God. So we have to learn, and if we learn to per persevere through diversity, through the storms, the tests, and the trials, then we can become mature. Amen? And then we can be used by God. We all know that we cannot be uh, fully developed away from problems, away from tests and trials, because they have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is for you to be stronger and for you to be able to get, give out what God needs to get out of you in order for someone else to grow and be better for it. Amen? Amen. It's all part of God's plan. Amen. The truth is, each one of us on this screen, and even those who aren't on the screen but are part of the body, we are bigger than nurture and we're bigger than nature. Because God has brought his spirit and put it into our nature, into our natural flesh, and made us so much better than we could have been if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, it wasn't for God's influence, and if it wasn't for teachers and pastors to give us what we need in order to be able to grow up and be mature. Amen? 
So you have God's DNA. God's DNA. Mm -hmm. Amen. That could be a whole nother message. But anyway, the truth is, is that we're so much more. Mm -hmm. We're not just nature and we're not just nurture. We're so much more because of God putting his super on our natural and allowing us to, to become so much greater than, than we could have ever been. Amen. Amen. We just got a warning that we've been talking too long without plugging in the, the computer. So hopefully we won't get cut off. We're almost done. All right. So, um, Pastor Cordy, can you read the, uh, the verse Ephesians 4, 16 out of the Amplified? Yes. <clears throat> it says, from him, the whole body, the church in all of its various parts, joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies. When each part is working properly, causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in unselfish love. Amen. Amen. That, that is strong and, and that is powerful. And that is the gist of what we're talking about. It says, from him, the whole body, the church, and all of its various parts joined, each one bringing, knitted firmly together. Firmly together, like if you knit something loosely, it could fall apart, but you knit firmly together. And every joint supplies. When each part working properly, glory to God, causes the body to grow, mature, building itself up in unselfish love, and then the fruit can be eaten. The fruit can be born, and this world can be affected by us. Amen? Sometimes that tree might need some pruning some cutting off the dead ends and, um, you know, so that the new branches can come up. So you gotta, you gotta do some work. And within doing that work in Colossians um, 3.12, um, therefore, as the, therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Forgive. You have to have a forgiving heart, a forgiving spirit. Because if you don't forgive, then you're going to block your blessings. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bind of perfection, the lighting of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were all you were called in one body, one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do, and whatever you do in word or deeds, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving, giving thanks to God the Father. Hmm. So it's not about you. About God and it's about your love walk. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's all I got. What you got? No, I just pray that you were blessed by God's word and you know the things that He's going to do through us because people are hurting and we're His we're His representation on this earth. So we have work to do. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it over to my wife. I'm going to be quiet <laughs> so the service can flow. Good work. Way to work together, guys. That was nice. And live on that.
Amen. If y'all got anything y'all want to say, because we host this service together. Teamwork so, makes the dream work. You guys are awesome uh, team preaching today and really received um, a lot of great nuggets from you guys. And you're right. You know, we it's all about unifying of the body, the unification of the body and us working together. And everyone plays a part, even though we're all different, but everyone has a specific part in this in this covenant, in the body of Christ. And if we can just, just focus on our part, amen. And everyone doing their own part when we come together, it's just so powerful. And oh, what God can do in the midst of us when we all come together. The Bible says that we're the, at the place of unity is where he commands that blessing. So amen. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really enjoyed your word. And uh, I thank you for it because it's, it's needed is that we have to remember that um, it's really about evangelism. You know, it's not about us. Mm. And um, it takes, I like I use the analogy of, the, of the, the body because we definitely need to understand that some, some of our parts aren't seen, but they're very important. And so don't be, you know, disturbed or whatever if you're not in the limelight of your, you know, cause I, I used to, didn't want to be in the front. I, I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't in ministry or, going to church to be seen. I was going to find out where I could help. And, and, and so we're, we're in that mindset right now. It's like all hands on deck. I, and I know you being in the Navy understand that is because when certain things are going on everybody and which, which we see it's going on in our world, this pandemic, you know, it's, it's time for everybody. It's not, not just the preacher behind the pulpit. It's each and every person that goes to the grocery store or goes to the, the laundromat or whatever, or wherever you may be. Um, and to just show the love of Christ and to begin to, uh, I, I was just talking to uh, dad this morning and about being more bold uh, in, in what we know is true and, and, and not just taking a back seat or, or, or getting caught up in what they talk about Black Lives Matter or whatever, but right is right and wrong is wrong. And so sometimes we as Christians become weak uh, in that area of, of standing up for what's right. And, and uh, so I just want to encourage us as a man and woman of God shared that message of, of evangelizing, sometimes you got to be able to stand up and say, you know, because people, I used to be a weak Christian, you know, <laughs> didn't want to express myself or felt as though that was being humble. That's not humble, you know, because if it's wrong, the Bible says speak the truth in love. And so uh, I just appreciate this event. I, I was telling my wife, I said, oh, this is evangelistic words. So you, you guys begin to, to really kind of stir up the flames and, and, and stir the fire again to help us understand that's the importance that we all have to realize that we have to evangelize. Doesn't matter your title, doesn't matter if you have a title or not. We have to express that Jesus is coming back and he's coming back for a church without spot, blemish and wrinkle. And so sometimes we need to get that Holy Ghost iron out and start pressing some things. So, so <laughs> appreciate you, you know, helping us to take a look at some things. Amen in the realm of evangelizing Amen. and working together. So yes, appreciate it. Yes. Great work. Great work. Thank you. Thank you so much for that word. Thank you for illustrating to us what teamwork looks like, what unity looks like um, as you taught together. Um, it was beautiful. It was an awesome word. And I know Pastor Charles, as you referenced um, the symphony, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but um, a symphony comes together and they make such a dynamic sound. But if you ever listen to them when they're warming up, right. and tuning up their right. instruments, it's yeah. a hot mess. Yes. But when they yes. make the decision to come together, they make one sound. That's a beautiful sound. And that's um, what I believe is God's desire for the body of Christ. Um, and speaking of being an inspiration, I just want to share that Desiree, um, you can tell us more about it, but Desiree works with a program called Matko Mamas, um, Montgomery County Mamas, and it's a resource program to help um, mothers in the county. Um, her program was named um, by Philadelphia Magazine as uh, one of Philly's best. Every year, they put out a magazine for like best of, ah. best cheesesteaks, best dentist, best resource program, or, or whatever they're nominated you for, but her program will be in, I guess it's the September issue mm -hmm. of Philly Magazine. Yes, um, and Mako Mamas is to recognize the disparities that um, Black women have experienced because um, Black babies are dying 3% um, at a higher rate than white babies. And it could be because 
of the mother being on public assistance and not getting the, the care that she needs and, and recognizing the disparities that black women um, endure. And, and my, my job is to try to reach these moms during the prenatal stages so that she can get the prenatal care that she needs because there are free services out there. And a lot of them will even go to the homes and home and work with the parents or the family, the mother. Um, but the goal is to um, prevent that that mortality rate. Amen. Amen. Wow. So I've, I've, I've learned a lot, even about doulas. I was like, what is a doula? Um, a doula is someone who will advocate for that mom and go into um, the, the appointments with the, the mother because they want to prevent... Um, They want to prevent um, the mother from having C-section. So Julia, um, I don't know if y'all remember Julia, yeah. but she is part of the um, Mako Mamas and she is a doula. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, um, I guess God has taken me out of my comfort zone because I just want to be in the background and to do this or to do that, but he's putting me more and more in the front. So I just praise God for even um, Philly Magazine for recognizing that it isn't a problem. This is a problem. It is an issue. If our babies are dying because of not getting the care that they need, it's, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see that it's being recognized and my goal is to, to, to have system change. So regardless if you have public assistance or, or a private insurance, everyone should be equal and treated the same. Amen. So praise God. Amen. Okay. Well, Amen. We heard from everybody before the service, so we're not going to ask everybody to say something after the service. But, um, just, you know, the only thing I say to everybody is, um, you know, Charles says something profound and he, it's no apology for it. Every joint has to supply. So I believe we had a lot of rest during this pandemic. When we get ready to come back, everybody got to show up ready to do their part. Um, you know, I was talking to one of the uh, leaders at the Y the other day and I basically told him the problem we have at the Y, we got a lot of chiefs but not enough Indians. And she 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 realized what I was saying. Like, it's no good having good leaders and nobody, you know, so nobody's doing, you know, coming in, doing their part. So we heard the word, it sounds good on paper, but let's, you know, I mean, I heard something my spiritual father said about two years ago. It's not good enough that Devin and Larry are the only two going overseas. You know, these are some of the areas we're talking about. So. Let's all just step up our game. Like, you know, to me, a good word is a word that's heard and put into action, you know, and demonstrated. And so we get a lot of good teaching and I'm just gonna say it, you know, I want this covenant to really pray. How can I step it up? How can I make myself more accountable? You know, we all got jobs, come on. We all got other stuff, but I mean, no, God brought us together as a covenant. So we can't use them things as excuses and put God's work on the back burner. Because ultimately, the old saint said something. I just couldn't shut up on this one. That's so profound. It's only what we do for Christ is going to really last. You know, and I know we heard and heard. It. I understand that now. You know, um, you know, even all throughout my career, uh, as hard as I worked on my job, I never put the stuff in the church in the kingdom on the back burner. I just had to go all in. So I pray that we all, you know, step up, do what we need to do. We heard the word, we got to do our part. What's my part? If you don't know your part, ask your pastor. What else can I do? Trust me, every pastor that's really doing work will find something for you to do, amen? And then when you ask for it, be willing to be responsible for what you ask for. Don't just drop the ball. That's been a problem in a lot of our churches. When I say our church is not just us on a screen, but they got a saying up there that most churches got 80% of the work, being, or they, most of the work being done by 20% of the people. Mm -hmm. We got to change that. Because guess what happens? Just with your body, since you talked about a body, 
if a part is overworking, guess what's going to happen to that part? It's going the muscle going to pop. The muscle's going to be strained. The muscle's going to be pulled. And guess what happened now? The 20% that was doing the work is less. You know what I mean? So we got to change that. And that's not just our churches. That's like a national thing here in the States that most churches, most people are not doing their part. And so you'll see a person with four different titles in the church, even the smaller ones, over the usher boards, over this. Why? Because everybody's not stepping up. Amen. How many know God brings a body together? You're not just some people their flesh lead them to churches, but when the spirit does it, it puts the parts where it needs to be. As Charles alluded to, the 206 bones. You know what I mean? Can you imagine that? 206 bones. You're right on it. Not the 100 something, the 206, the higher number. All connected. Not just because they ain't got nothing else to do, but for a function, which is a purpose. And the funniest thing about this to the two of you, I was going to teach on this last week. And that's when the Holy Spirit changed it. Now I see why. Because y'all were pulled to teach it. Because sometimes coming from the apostle, oh, that's this apostle. But now when it comes from your brothers and your sisters, sometimes brothers and sisters got to say, come on, let's step it up. You know, because we got work to do, y'all. And we ready to start traveling again. So we're going to need some people to step up, step in there. You know, um, and we talked about environments this morning, Apostle Larry. I don't know if you remember, I was talking about my nephew and even, you know, putting kids in different environments, not just kids, but people to excel. And I mean, no, we need to create environments, even in environments that are not healthy at your workplace and all that. When you bring the anointing, you're changing atmospheres and environments the natural stuff, come on somebody, and can cause somebody to excel even in bad places. <clears throat> but we got to now step it up and bring that, 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 says that God DNA. Like when you talk, it shouldn't be you. When you your walk, it shouldn't be you. We should be showing them Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. The Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Before you try to multiply, you make sure you're fruitful. So that's Amen. why. Hey, the message is clear. What are we gonna do with it, freedom? All right. It's clear. It was clear. Hey, Amen. It don't get no clearer than that. Didn't it? And you can't be like, well, he screamed that. No, they didn't scream. They said it real. Hey, <laughs> Amen. Even when Charles got knocked off the beach, I don't know how, but he <laughs> just knocked him off the beach. <laughs> he he was just disappearing and stuff. <laughs> and, and I know some of y'all as he talking, who he talked to, you want to knock him off the beach, but nah, he came back. God brought him back. Why? Because that word, come on, resurrection. come on, has resurrection power. We need, we need to, we need to hear it and do it. And let me just say something about teamwork. It makes everybody's job easier. Easier. And together, everyone achieves more. Come on, we got, we know all this stuff. We, we can go all oh, dream teamwork. Come on, y'all, make stuff. Dream. Dream we know work. all that stuff. But now it's until we actually do it. And to be honest, we're doing a great job. Cause we're not taking Africa and all. Charles, get back in the screen and stop showing off. It's like he's trying to show off and fade in the water. It's not fair to the other <laughs> who are not at the beach. <laughs> That's not team play. He's rubbing it in. With all jokes aside, <laughs> all that we're doing all over the world, we ain't doing it with a lot of people, but we got people who brought in who said, you know what? Bam. I'm going to pray. I'm going to say I'm going to pay. I ain't going, okay, but I'm going to still make sure y'all get over there for the work it done, whatever it is. But that's what's making it work. That's why you always hear me share what's going on. Because this ain't Devin, Cordy, Larry, and Monette. This is all of us. The stuff we're doing. Amen. Our freedom name is in nations and now still going to nations. Why? Because you brought into the vision, amen, that God gave us. Because if it was up to me, we'd be playing basketball all over the world. Me and Charles would be like, you take a team over there, I take a team over there, let's go. And whoever wins, if we win, you get saved. We used to do that. We played some guys, and I said, after we beat y'all, we set them up, and we beat them, they had to come to church. That'd be my way of doing evangelism. <laughs> you know, hey, amen. That's pretty I good. Mean, that was one way, and we did it. I was like, Lord, you know we can't lose now because we might lose these guys. And I just believe, come on, but I like what Larry said. I got out of this. This is about evangelism. Well, the truth be told, all that we do in the church should center around evangelizing. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Come on. So I try to shut up, but I can't when the Holy Spirit is telling me to talk. So, you know, people want to shut me up. I ain't shut up. Let's do the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 And let's be evangelistic and look for opportunities to witness and let your light shine. Anybody in agreement with that? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And that way, this word, as my wife said, will have resurrection. It, it has to come out of us into the lives of other people. Amen. Glory Amen. Just lift your hands. Father, I pray for those who don't know their part, don't know God, that they open up their mouths and those who do know and that they step up and they repent or not for just letting the part just sit there and allowing other parts to strain doing too much. Father, I pray as we go into this next season of church season, God, that we'll go in there with so much momentum, as Denise said over a year ago, that this is us just being prepared, rested to fuel into another dimension yeah. of God's work. So I thank you that we're being strengthened, God. So now when we all come back together, yes. we'll be a mighty force in you. And the work will be easier, even as it magnifies and gets bigger it'll still be easier because we'll all do our parts. I thank you for this word today, God, for it was definitely from the throne room that all do diversity and do, there's many parts in the diversity of gifts and talents. They all have to work together to bring glory to you. That none of us are in it to bring glory to ourselves, but ultimately to bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, come on, somebody say amen. 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 So and that means we gotta hold each other accountable. You know, and that's why I ain't no apology. I'm glad y'all say everybody got to do their part. Like, we ain't apologizing for what the word says. Come on. And don't let nobody, this is what I was talking to Larry about this morning. See, y'all think I just love Larry because I just love, I know I love Larry, but there's times when Larry gets a call from daddy and I'm being daddy. You only know what we talk about, and that's what he alluded to earlier. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is the area, next area. And we got to be open, as I heard it being taught, to be poured into. That's why God gives you leaders. Come on. They ain't always going to agree with you. Sometimes they got to get you out of where you are. How many of you had good coaches? And who was your best coaches? I tell you, the ones who worked your butt. Come on. They challenged you. They made you go beyond you. How many of you had good teachers? I, you know, I heard about the one good teacher. Come on. And another good teacher. And, you know, I, I read about Miss P through dads. Come on. You know, you get some kind of people in your life. They challenge you to go beyond you. Yeah, that's right. You're not going to push yourself. Come on. Then when you get people like that, don't get mad at them when they tell you something you don't want to hear. Embrace it. Why? Because you know it's to make you better. Somebody tell you, hey, you need to be on time. Somebody tell you, you need to put more effort. Don't get mad if you're late. Deal with your lateness. Let God use people to help you. Come on. Can I get one amen out of here? Yeah. Amen. 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 I say, nah, we ain't going to do ministry and business the way we used to. We're going to be there. Well, I just said, we're going to do it with all God gave us. Come on. I mean, no, he went all the way with us. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go all the way with him. And we're going to stay uh, committed glory. and stay faithful. Can I get one amen out of it? We're going to stay yeah. committed and faithful to the task. And we ain't going to stop till the job get done. And when the job get done, we're going to do another job. Amen. Because you amen. don't retire in the kingdom. That's right. Amen. That's right. Thank you for that second amen. Got three. You might, you might get tired, but you don't retire. No, I'm just kidding. You say, like, say you might get tired, but you don't reach out. Don't you act, boy. What was your word? Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. I'll call you again. That uh, grace, that grace come on you, man. It, it only comes on you when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. If you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing, you don't get no grace for it. Yeah, I mean, no, God didn't put a grace on you. Come on. Amen. Yeah. You got to do it in you. Can't do the Lord, the work of the Lord without the, the yeah. Lord, the Lord of the work. Amen. And that's what Mary and Martha was about. You spend time in his presence. Don't just try to do the work without being. So both of them, it was about balance. Amen. Right. We're going to take our offering. Amen. 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 If you got to get your tithes in, get them in. Uh, your offerings, missions, um, something like I said, we, we've been doing good, y'all. We ain't turning back even in this area. Amen. That's right. Amen. Um, and, and I want to hear some testimonies next week because I know they popping, man, because I know God is raining Same on us financially. Amen. Uh, man, so we're going to we're going to testify next week. That's what we're going to do. One of them nights, maybe, I don't know, maybe next Sunday, we'll have a testimony. When last time we had a good old, not no, y'all know, God woke me up this morning. Okay, we know he woke you up, but we see you on the window pane. Now after he woke you up, what happened? You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes we couldn't have them, man, because people just get up and they just start babbling and, and, and you know, God got up and 
I fell down this morning, only my right foot hurt. Like, we ain't trying to hear all that stuff. Baby. We're trying to, come on, we're going to hear what God is really doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can I get it? Amen. Amen. Anybody remember some of them services? Why don't we have them? So we got to be taught how to have them. Yeah, we got to be taught how to have them. You know what I mean? Come on. But I know God's doing, and sometimes we do that because really he ain't doing nothing else. And then we don't want to keep hearing what he did 20 years ago. <laughs> Me and Larry talked about that. Somebody got on the Zoom talking about what God did 20 years ago. No, man, you preaching today. What is God doing today? Amen. Glory to God. Anybody got some testimonies to share next week? Yes. Come on, raise them hands. Amen. We're going to have a Amen. testimony. You know what? That's what we're going to do next Saturday. Ain't no preaching, right. Monette. Write that down. Text me back to make sure. Amen. That, that, that's what we're going to testify. Amen. Amen. So I said glory to God. Glory to God. Well, should we say next Sunday? Give my extra day to get some. What you say, Mo? <laughs> What'd you next say? Next Sunday, we're going to have a tes testimony service. All right, so next Sunday, not next Saturday. Because yeah, we're going to give them an extra day. Some might need that All extra right. day. All right, all right. that testimony. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> all right, so next Sunday, we testify. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And not what God did 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, what he's doing recently. Somebody say amen. 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 Are we clear? We're clear. Amen. I said, are we clear? I got your text. So me and Monet got to text each other because we go through the week. What we doing? Man, what would you say? <laughs> Amen. So we took the tithes and offerings. Let's pray over it. Father, we pray over the tithes and the offerings and the alms, That's which right. is missions. God, we thank you for this covenant, having supernatural givers and those who believe in the word that they preach by tithing, bringing offerings and alms. But more importantly, God, doing the work, ministering, to those who are hurting, those who are less fortunate. I just pray a special grace over every giver that gives and continues to give into your work, God. I pray that you bless them beyond measure in Jesus' name and everything that they touch becomes gold because of their faithfulness to you and the kingdom. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 Then I'm just going to have Apostle Larry, if whatever last remarks you have since we joined and close us out in prayer. We love everybody. Enjoy your day. Um, and uh, if you don't pray nothing else, keep praying for tra uh, traveling mercy. That's one of my favorite prayers now because I ain't even tell y'all. I saw about the accident behind us last night, but as I was talking to my wife, somebody had an accident right in front of me. So the car in front of me got hit. And I'm glad. Jesus. I mean, I mean I'm just, I'm paying attention now. And I remember I was on the phone with you. I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. Another... People are just out here. I don't know. I don't, I ain't saying the guy was drunk this morning, but I think anybody rushing. Um, some of them, like like Dad was talking about earlier, some of them maybe traumatized. You know what I mean? Seriously, it's like the, the effects of the pandemic. That stuff Charles broke down before too. How the pandemic is messing people up, and people are literally losing their mind. Mm -hmm. This happened this morning, like nine o'clock this morning. I hope they wasn't drinking that early or still drunk from last night. You know what I mean? But yeah. just flew through like three cars okay. straight to another lane and then bam, yeah. just hit somebody. Yeah, definitely traveling mercies because, mm -hmm. and, and I don't just play, pray for traveling mercies for us, but the, the, you know how they say you should drive defensively because you got to worry about everybody else's situation. So I'll be praying for the drivers around me, <laughs> you know. I was praying Amen. for that guy in front of me. I was like, Lord, help him, you know, because like you said, there, you don't know their situations. Some people just getting off work late. They might have did like 14 hour ship and they're driving home. And I've got multiple stories of, uh, we know a pastor friend um, whose wife was killed. She was jogging on the road and the nurse got off. That was back when they was having them long hours and she shifted over, didn't even see her, hit her and killed her. You know, just that fast. So things like that are happening. Um, this pastor here in York who just lost his wife to a head on collision. Again, you just don't know. So it's like, you know, traveling mercies for us, but also for praying for the ones around us that are in their cars, operating vehicles. Because everyone's got their own situation that, you know, just just intercede. Yeah, I thank God for my daughter Nikki too, because uh, she loves coming here when she don't have to work. But one thing she'll do, she'll tell me and my wife, I'm going home take a nap first. You know what I mean? Because they work them long hours, and and that's why when you said that at home. And, and, and you know, and, and she wants to get here, but she also she'll go and take that nap. And we'll say, "What time getting on the road?" And she might give her a certain time, but if she's still tired, she ain't gonna she ain't ironing that time. Yeah. She's like, I, I'm gonna get some more rest, or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some nursing hours, you know. Some of y'all might know about them twelve hour shifts, and and then they constantly on. So go ahead, I'm sorry. Days, days or nights, and your body's never adjusted. 
<laughs> and, 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 and can I just go there? I pray for all of y'all. And, and then really, I'm really going to step up my traveling mercy prayers now because what we witnessed, I've witnessed, we, this thing came behind us and then thank God it went around us. I just think it was, I don't know, God was with us. And I ain't even see it. My, my cousin was driving and he said, man, I hope this guy slow down. And the guy, he said, he don't know how the guy missed us because, you know, when we stopped, he went around us and he said, this car wiggled. I, God had to where I ain't see no, none of it until the car got in front of us and started hitting everybody. Oh, I mean, he cleared out the road. Like, when y'all would have saw the cars, but let me show you how good God is. My wife's my witness. One guy just dropped off a client, an Uber client. Had that client been in the back, dead. Because his whole back was crushed. In the front seat, I never seen nothing like it, man. It was like, was broke, the seat. Like, But if that client, he just dropped him off. He was an Uber driver. He was messed up. You know what I mean? And then two old women was in the one truck that got hit the most. Truck smashed. And these two old women walked out. Walked out. That's why your seatbelt is so important. And he was driving a, a dolly. Uh, what's a big dually? Dually? What's a big Ford Larry that most construction called a dually? Uh, what you talking about? Them dual wheels? Them, yeah, them there. Yeah, but that's what it was. My, my network kept saying a dually or whatever. It's the biggest truck out there. Them big high ones. Most construction uh -huh. people use. That's what the guy was driving. So literally, he could have ran over a couple of the cars. Oh, you talking about something? Oh. Yeah, I think it's called a dually. I'm gonna get the name, but in other words, they they powerful, them big old engines, and they you know, I figured you or Charles might know because y'all usually know everything, but to go to show y'all don't know everything. <laughs> so anyway, not, this time. not this time. Ooh, it has to I, I didn't know if you were talking about like, the dually you talking about commercial. I don't know. Were you talking about commercial? Were you, you talking about commercial or was it you talking about commercial or or personal? Uh, personal well, I know he said it's more mm -hmm. used like for contractors, right? Yeah, it's a double and it has a double, it has dual wheels on the back. Yeah, on the back. Yeah, 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 that's up trucks. Right? Yeah, we do. that's it. That was you hope. Yeah, hope and um say drive, but don't you drive one of them things? All right, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh Charles and Larry don't know everything. Now. So that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um <laughs> Dads, don't laugh. I'm talking about your husband. So, you know, that's how big this truck was. But when you see it, I'm telling you right now, and then the one, it was an explosion when it hit the one. You just see an explosion. And nobody, I'm telling you, I didn't see, I don't know how serious the old lady, I know that they took him in ambulance, but they walked out. That's God, thank you. But how about God had a couple doctors there and a nurse? Wow. One guy, he, and he started going around asking everybody are oh, they hurt. Now, the old Devin, if he wasn't saved, Come on, here's my opportunity. Yeah. And that guy don't know who he is. He, I mean, he is everything. <laughs> Come on, I mean, I mean, I wasn't thinking that, but what some of y'all, some of them unsaved folk, because he hit everything. You had to see it look like a war, didn't it? Look, it looked like a war zone, man. Like cars, when I say cars, like just dismantle and pieces no, over I here and there. And 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 bystand. One girl was on the bike, scared as I don't know what. So, so I mean, no, we can serve God to get blessed. We had to lie and say, yeah, I got hurt, yeah, yeah. And you know, I flew out the car, but even though he hit my car, he didn't put a dent. He just knocked me. I mean, you know how we get. And nah, but you know, nobody got hurt. So, great. Thank God every day that we alive, y'all, because God showed me, and that's why He allowed me to see it to say. Hey, come on, because of my mercies, y'all not mm -hmm. me? like I'm, yes, like yes. What you yes. prayed earlier, Charles, that that thing was real. Charles, Charles said I was on both sides of this thing. Mm -hmm. You know where I fell asleep could have been me. You know how I many know it takes a second or two to just go out. And if you are tired like that, don't say you got it. I had to get the wheel up last week. I never swerved like that. And my wife said, "Honey, you and usually I said I got it." I went, I came out from under that car. So Des, that's good. If you've seen, I ain't, it ain't time to have egos, y'all. Get it from under, and sometimes you might say, no, I got it from here. You said you had it, but you in the wrong lane four times. You know what I mean? No, come on, get up. And bam. And so this thing about life. So we got to thank God every day we wake up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. Every day we drive and we make it to and from our destination. Yes, Lord. All right, so we prayed all the offerings. So Pastor Lyle, you want to close us out? We love everybody. And have a good day and um stay encouraged and I don't know what my wife doing is upside down and <laughs> upside let's, down. Let us pray. Love y'all. Good word. Um we, we we I guess the Lord is setting us up so when we get back into the building. <laughs>
we need all hands on deck, as I said earlier. We just got to begin to seek the Lord for what can we do more? What can we do greater? What can yeah. we do better? Yeah. Um, you know, if you've been praying, pray more. If you've been giving, give more. If you've been serving, serve to a greater degree and uh, just to let God use you. But let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, oh God. And so often we take it for granted and for, we ask for forgiveness, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, that we take sometimes your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness for granted. Lord, because we, we don't know what's out ahead of us, what's around us, what's going on behind us. But you know, you see everything. Yes, Lord. And Lord, you continue to protect us and not just us, but those that we love and those that are close to us, those that we are concerned about. And Lord, even those we may not know, we ask God that you continue to, to just protect those, God, and continue to make a way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for showing us, Lord, for, through these little uh, incidents and little accidents, God, that you allowed us to be here for, for a season, for such a time as this, to begin to evangelize, to help those that don't know you. And so, God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to you use us to a greater degree, God. But we just ask, Lord, that you would show us. Lord, Lord fill our mouths, Lord. So, so often we, we, we think we don't have the words to say. We may not have them in our own intellect, our own thinking, our own reasoning. But you, Holy Spirit, as, as the man of God and the woman of God has spoke today, you, you are our help. You, you're the one that come alongside us to give us what to say and, and give us those, those inclinations and those thoughts. And Lord, let us begin to walk in it like never before. Let us be more sensitive to your presence. And so we bless you. We praise you. We don't take it for granted as we pray and bless our food when we eat out. We don't take it for granted when we pray and ask your blessings yes. when we get in our car and we're going just to our mother's house or going just to the store or wherever. But God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your ministering angels that's encamped yes. about us, God. Because we sometimes we do the same thing over and over and we'll take it for granted. But we don't, uh, Lord, take it lightly, God, as we take those seconds, those minutes, just to say thank you and ask for covering over us and our loved ones. So we thank you, Father, for what you've done today. We thank you for a mighty word today. We thank you, God, for, for just the, the differences that we have and how you're causing us to, to be interlocked and interlaced. That as the man of God used the scripture, Lord, that we're knitted together, tightly yeah. joined it together. Yes. So we bless you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. And Lord, it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Uh, and then, Larry, can you bless the food we about ready to receive? We're going to now meet in the church fellowship hall. <laughs> <laughs>